It has other names, the scalar product and the inner product. My favorite one, I always like to call it, maybe I learned this first. I like to call it the dot product because you draw a dot in between. As opposed to the cross product, which we'll learn later, where you draw a cross in between or an X. And one of the reasons it's called the scalar product, because the answer you get is just a number, not a vector. It's just a scalar, not a vector. So it's called the scalar product. And all you do is multiply corresponding components and add them up. This, the dot product, should remind you a lot of matrix multiplication. But unlike matrices where the rows and columns had to match up, in vectors, vectors are always column vectors. So you just multiply it's already like turned on the side where you crash it into the other one and add up the pieces. So here's our first example, and it's going to be easiest if you write them as column vectors. want to find the dot product of V and W. You crash them into each other. The two would hit the two, the negative three would hit the other two. Add up the pieces and the dot product would be negative four. So basically what's happening Dot product was a draw dot in between each other. The top ones crash into each other, the bottom ones crash into each other. When you add up those pieces, and you get negative four. That's how easy the dot product. In three dimensions, it is exactly the same idea. Write your column vectors. And I want to crash them into each other. So I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite them here. We've got two, negative five, and three, dot product, negative four, and one, and negative seven. This will crash into this one, crash into that one, that one will crash into that one. Add up the pieces, so two times four, that'll be eight. Negative five times one, that's plus negative five. And three times negative seven, that's plus negative 21. The answer is negative 18. Very short and you'll understand. <coughs> How hard is the dot product? Pretty easy, right? And we're going to mainly use it in three dimensions. We'll do some work in two dimensions as well. But there's some crazy awesome things that we can do with the dot product as a result. First of all, as we learned in matrices, we have to learn that if we learn a new multiplication, we have to check which rules are allowed and which ones are not. Unlike matrices, you can do the dot product either way. Because the one matrix, it's like that both of them are columns, so it doesn't matter front or back, which one's first, which one's second. 
So u dot v is the same as v dot u. If you have a constant, you can leave it out front. You could put it with u or you could put it with v. You can distribute with the dot product. You can either choose to add the two vectors up first, or you could do the dot product with one and dot product with the other. And if you do the dot product with a zero vector, you just get zero. Because everything's going to hit a zero, and when you add up all the zeros, you're going to get zero. So these are the very, the first very basic properties of the dot product. But then we get to the interesting one. The dot product of a vector and itself will always give you the length of a vector squared. Kind of interesting. But the most important result that occurs with the dot product is the dot product is always equal to the length of one times the length of other times the cos of the angle in between them. <coughs> That's crazy. So that means if you've got a vector u and a vector v with an angle theta in between them, something as simple as the dot product will tell you the angles in between, which is kind of, this is the first place where vectors is going to make the mathematics that you used to have to do <coughs> easier than they used to be, okay? So I'm going to give you, uh, just because it's so much fun, we're going to do an example already. We have examples in the notes, but I, I just can't wait, okay? So, We'll start in two dimensions. We are going to go, um, we're going to take the point A here, is going to be at 2 comma 3. I'm going to take the point B, is going to be at 3 comma 5. And I'm going to point, put the point C there at 7, comma, 4. And you definitely could do this using your old math. What would you do to find that angle using old math? Well, you can't use soap control here because this, if you, like, if you join this, it doesn't make a right angle triangle. Sine long, cosine long. Sine long, cosine long, maybe? Right? So what would you have to do if you used your sine long, cosine long? Do you see that you would have to figure out how long this is? How long this is? How long the blue line is? And then use your cosine law, which is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. Right? Square root. No. E oh, yeah, equals c squared. Yeah, c minus square root. So you have to rearrange to get cos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a test on that in November. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so there would be a little bit of annoying work to do in this situation. In vectors, Can you see that vector a, b to go from a to b, I went one to the right and two up. That's my vector a, b. If I wanted to go from a to c, I'm going to go five to the right and one up. 
Those are my two vectors. The length of this vector, this way, vectors are, once you've written out the vector, finding the length is just a squared plus b squared, just one squared plus two squared, that's easy. Finding the length of ac, that's really easy to do with your vectors, okay? Whereas I think you would have been a little bit, using the graph, it just would have taken you longer, okay? So there's a length of AB, there's a length of AC. The dot product of one, two, dot product with five, one, is super easy math. It's just gonna be five plus two, it's gonna equal seven. And according to this new formula, that the dot product is equal to the length of U times the length of V cos theta, I can rearrange, and you'll see this in your notes, as the dot product So I am able to say that cos of theta is going to equal 7 over root 5 times root 26. And I can go to my calculator, and I can go cos inverse of 7 divided by the square root of root 5 times root 26. I think that is way faster than using the cosine law and all of the mathematics that we, like this question, totally could give you in grade 11 and you could do it. Right, so you could have done it two courses, three courses ago. If we have a question on the test, it could be something related and we have to make that clear. Um, so well, an no, right? Sorry, but if you want to go home, you could either walk or drive. It's up to you. So you feel free to walk. Because this is saying, this is way easier. I know, but like, it could rain really hard with that. Would the dog points be able to get away? Um, probably. Okay. I had a harder problem with that. You'd probably just lose marks because you couldn't finish the test because you took the longer way. So no, I wouldn't dock you marks on that one, but you'd lose marks on the other one. <laughs> so, this formula, I think it's rearranged later, but if you want to rearrange it here already, is super important. Okay? Have to write that down? It's written later, too, if you don't want to. Okay. Um, in the question that we did, it would probably save you 10 minutes of work. In three dimensions, it'll save you an hour. Because if I give you three vectors, two directions in three dimensions and say, can you tell me the angle between them? You'd have to transpose all of that into two dimensions to use your cosine law and sine law. You're going to get very hard. It's going to be hard to visualize, and the vectors will make it super easy. What does this also mean? If I rearrange it like that, can you see that if your dot product is zero, then this fraction would be zero. And when is cos theta equal to zero? At 90 degrees. So if your dot product is zero, now you have a very quick way to show that two things are perpendicular to each other. If your dot product is positive, Cos of theta is positive in quadrant one. Then you know the angle between your vectors is less than 90 degrees. If your dot product is negative, cos is negative in quadrant two, then you know that the angle between them is obtuse. And if two vectors are parallel, 
<laughs> then the angle between them will be zero. Since cos theta is one, if your dot product and the lengths are the same, then you know the two are parallel. So this type of multiplication, which is so simple, it's just multiplying corresponding values, has such huge implications for angles, and it makes our math so much easier. Um, this is sort of a typical theme in mathematics. As you learn more complicated math, you find shortcuts for doing math that you did earlier in better ways, like derivatives, right? Remember completing the square to find the vertex of a problem? Now you can find the vertex using the derivative and just setting it equal to zero. And here's that formula in its rearranged form. Super important formula. The summation. I think they invented weekends for teachers. So now we take three dimensions, two vectors in three dimensions, and we can find the angle in between them easily. First we find the dot products. And again, write this out. Here is here is the vectors as column vectors. That's really easy to see the dot product from the column vectors. You, you missed this? No, I don't. Jason, you missed it. You got it right now. <laughs> Weekends are not enough for teachers, so they invented summer holidays. Yeah, I know, but she did it. Really? 